Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Whoa, you hear that? Train is rolling by. There it is. And guess where we are? We are in a town called Shimbashi and the home of the Yonex Showroom. Stay tuned. All right, we got a special tour, private tour, of the Yannick showroom. We just arrived at the Shimbashi station, which is literally two stops from Tokyo station. Yannick is on the second floor of this building, literally steps away from, oh, there's more trains. <laughs> Let's go inside. I got Eric with me here from the showroom and he wanted to show me this um, display that looks like a motor. Um, talk to me about the history of this motor. So we consider this motor to be uh, part of the founding of this company, a craftsmanship spirit of uh, the Japanese and as well as uh, people from Niigata. This was the one of the founding motors when uh, when our founder, Minoru Yamiyama, cr uh, created the company in 1946, right after the war. He We used to make wooden floats for, uh, uh, built for, uh, made for fishing. It's kind of supplement the fishing parts. But the uh, as you know, time went on and we started transitioning uh, and the fishing industry uh, kind of evolved and started using more plastic floats. We kind of made the jump over. So let's say this side, we started making more uh, badminton rackets. Uh, we started, we made the jump for, uh, from there to badminton rackets as an OEM manufacturer. And then from the 60s, we started developing our own, uh, for example, like the Queen Hard B1000 or Lumina Ace. Um, and then from there on, we started moving, uh, moving forward, trying to make more and more rackets and eventually we got into the tennis market and from there um i think one of the major uh, major keynotes of our tennis uh, uh, of our tennis rackets is uh we started we developed um something called an overpress shaft cap that kind of made rackets a little bit more durable tennis rackets a little bit more durable and from there it kind of uh helped propel our name out a little bit uh more uh, one, of, one of the more notable things and one of the hallmarks of our uh, tennis, tennis technology would be the isometric frame, which was uh, created in the 1980s based on the requests by uh, Martina Navratilova, as well as uh, Billie Jean King, who wanted something a little bit more, they said a little bit, at the time they wanted something a little bit more oversized, a little bit more powerful, but in, uh, as opposed to making it uh, super oversized, we created a square head to help increase the, uh, amount of, uh, the, increase the sweet area on top of uh, increasing the amount of uh, power you can generate in, in a stroke. Oh, wow. So... What would you say was your first um, tennis racket that uh, hit the mark? Let's say hit everybody, made a splash, put you on the map. I would say that one very racket right would be right here, the Rex King Twenty Two. Even till now, we get some some we get the occasional Japanese couple from bringing it in and telling us that they love this racket so much. I think um, from then on we move forward. Ends in the tens. Where's the rest of the history? Well, uh, the rest of the history is uh, ha unfolding in front of you because uh, right here we just got up to when we uh, uh, established the Tokyo Showroom in Shimbashi here in 2018, at end of 2018. So we only have on this wall just up to that point, but maybe in the future we'll try to maybe update this and get this a little bit more up to date with uh, more recent news. All right, so let's talk about the showroom a little bit here. This was um, created in and opened in 2018. Uh, why was it open? Um, we had 
jumped we had had showrooms in the past in many other places like Harbar right in front of the right in front of our headquarters in uh, Boonkill but uh, more and more we expanded the size but the mo- main thing about the showroom is I think and maybe that's true in the in, in the US there's maybe not a lot of places where there's uh, you can go find all the products all the range available you can see feel touch all the all of our products rackets shuttles balls strings all of them are available you have staff who are very expertly um, trained in our specifically on our, our products a lot of them are for example my my myself i'm i'm uh very well versed in the badminton world there's some some of, some of our other staff who are very well versed in um tennis and soft tennis as well snowboard golf we have uh very special specialists here we're willing to help and take care of each and everyone's needs and try to do our best with that so I'm guessing you're a badminton player. Uh, I try to be. I think I'm. A, I want to do my best there too. I'm on the company team as well. So. Got it. So you're. What's your number one sport? Badminton or tennis? Uh, I mean, growing up in you in the U.S., there's tennis everywhere. But uh, definitely for me, I, uh, badminton runs in the family. So I kind of try to do both, but uh, I put more of my time into badminton. Got it. All right. So that's. Eric, talking about the history of Yonix. All right, guys, transformation. When in Japan, Yonix. So I'm at the racket. Whoa, look at all these rackets here. Um, You guys know that I play with these. I study these, but... Let's bring in an expert from the showroom to talk about these. So I have Racket Developer. Hello. Tell them your name. My name is Mizuki. Mizuki, what is your position here? Um, I work f- on the Racket product development team at the headquarters at Yonex. So you have a very important job, right? I guess. I guess <laughs> I do. <laughs> You get to make the products that I get to test and critique. That's right. right. Yeah, that's right. So how much back and forth goes um, on with the playing and the feel? Um, Well, honestly, it's countless number of times that we have to communicate with the factory and the team to get the best products that we can to deliver it to the customers all around the world. Let's start with... um, Let's start with E-Zone here. Uh, E-Zone was changed in what year? 2021? Yes. <laughs> this has been a very successful line for you. The number one seller in the United States comes from this line. The 100 and the 98 do very, very well in America, as you probably know. <laughs> um, and nothing has changed in the new version that just came out except for the color can you explain why nothing changed and why this color right so first of all um like you mentioned this seventh generation e-zone has been very popular amongst the customers um so we wanted them to enjoy the performance that it has for a bit longer Mm -hmm. but of course it's um it wouldn't be fun if it didn't have a bit of a appearance change. So we made it a little bit more slick with, um, we, we used the base black color and then we made um, paint shifting, uh, color shifting paint and um, made it really slick. And um, this signifies the night sea, the powerful, the powerfulness of the racket and also um, how, explosive the night sea can be why night and why sea (laughs) that's true um well of course e-zone has um e-zone is known for its power Mm -hmm. and we we wanted to kind of um link that with something that's out in the nature and Uh, we thought you know um the night sea is is a is a pretty cool concept and we talked about it in within the company, and then we we made a really cool design out of that. 
Yeah, no, I like black. I wasn't, and then the blue actually accentuates the black very, very well. So, um, <laughs> bravo, bravo on that. Um, how long do we expect this to be around? How long? Um, that's a that's a secret. <laughs> <Darn>. <laughs> That that was close, but um, we can't we can't g okay. give you any information on that. Okay, so buy it while you can, is what she's saying. Yes, please. Well, actually, I have one question. Yes. Um, the E Zone line overall was developed for what type of player? So it's developed for intermediate all the way up to advanced players who's looking for power in their game and um, also a plush feel mm. when they're so they can um, feel the ball without sacrificing, you know, your arms or <laughs> elbows, mm -hmm. things like that. So it's really nice on the arm and you can hit aggressive balls with, um, with this racket for sure. I've been dying to ask this question. Um, maybe you know the answer. Yonex in the past have been more squarish in shape in recent years it's gotten more rounder as you can see with the hoops here what's the concept behind that so um good question very good question that's a tough one to answer <laughs> but obviously every single model has different performance that we're trying to achieve slightly different performance so um, we try to balance what we want to achieve with that generation of the racket so with this one the seventh generation we wanted to focus on um, the maneuverability of the racket, so uh, we made it a little bit more um, balanced <laughs> uh, compared to the other ones that you're talking about. And um, we're also um, searching for the most beautiful and um, functional isometric shape, and we're still in in search of the perfect shape. So oh. we keep on changing it and developing it and seeing which one works the best. Yeah, I have to say it is more beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the um, V-Core line here. Yes. Um, this was new to the line about one year ago. Um, what was the concept and the development behind the V-Core line? So this seventh generation V Court. Well, V Court first of all is our spin racket mm -hmm. of our racket series, and this one has focused on the most spin in Yonex history. It was the concept, and that's what we were able to achieve with this racket. Um, we've changed the structure and um, also packed packed it with um, different technologies and we were able to achieve the high launch angle, but with with a lot of spin. So players who are looking to attack the court with aggressive spin are able to do so with this racket. What did you do to the racket that gave it a higher launch angle? Okay, so the, uh, the one that contributes most to the high launch angle is that we've widened, enlarged, and widened the two o'clock and the 10 o'clock mm -hmm. um, position so that the ball rolls a bit longer on the racket and allows for a higher launch angle. You achieved it because when I played with it, it was right there. Yeah. <laughs> it was right <laughs> there. <laughs> and, and notice she picks up the 100. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't pick up the 98, and we're, not, we're ignoring these lights. So she picks up the 100, right? That's probably your top seller. Um, yes, that is, but also I'm a bit biased here because I do, I do personally use oh. the V Core 100, so that's why it was most natural for me Got to it. pick it up. Got it. Yeah, she picked up her own racket. <laughs> of course she did. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the, what I call the player series, um, now called the Percept line. Um, talk to me about this new Percept line. Okay, so, um. This is our new racket that was released in August. Oh, sorry. <laughs> August last year. Oh, I'll hold it for you. Thank you. So it was released about seven or eight months for where I am. So yeah, it's about August. Yes, I think yeah. so. And um, so with this racket, we were looking for, well, this is our control model of the three series. But um, this we are looking to, um, for the players to perceive how they want to hit the ball and this racket will allow you to 
do exactly that <laughs> is what we're trying to achieve. So the name Percept, um, when I first saw this racket and I saw the name, I thought, well, perception came to mind. So it's probably has to do with the perception of you or me um, striking the ball, hopefully cleanly, and the racket doing what it's supposed to do. So percept perception, is that correct? You are exactly correct. <laughs> Actually, maybe you can uh, do a bit of marketing. Were you on our marketing team when we were doing this? Like you, you were, um, you were right with everything that you were saying. Um, we want players to feel, um, imagine the ball they want to hit and build up the points like they want to with this racket and um, have the exact placement that they're looking for with control. Would you say this was a stiff or flexible or great combination of both? I would say this is um, a combination of both, but for a control racket, you'd think it's a uh, on a stiffer end of um, the spectrum, but we've made it flex a lot. So um, we are using a new material called server filter right here on the shaft, and it allows um, for the racket to flex, which allows for a better ball pocketing. Mm. But then um, we made the top half of the racket very rigid, um, increased the layers of graphite. So we are making the ball pocketing better without sacrificing power got it and then vdm is no longer here that's right vdm is gone <laughs> from the from the grip the server filter acts as a dampening um material also and it, you don't need a dampener to use this racket i believe i don't use a dampener do you <laughs> i don't <laughs> with this racket anyway have you ever used a dampener i have oh. but not with this one okay very good. And your model of choice in this? Um, well, you know, I said I was using Vico 100 earlier, but I am also still deciding on whether I want to use this one or <laughs> the Vico 100. Okay. Well, to be continued there. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoy tennis with a lot of power. But do you recommend <laughs> this for me? Well, if you want to try it, uh, you've probably tried it out, but you know, if you like it, you like it. So I actually love this racket. It's oh, a, yeah. it's the 115 was good. I thought this was way better. Uh, they, your favorite is 120? Um, just for playing around. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Um, you know what? We, we don't want to limit it. Well, we design rackets um, for a group of people, but we don't want to limit the rackets towards those people so if you want to try out the 120 and play singles go ahead all right <laughs> so i'm guessing you sell this to a slightly older demographic that, that's that's the main um, target that we developed this racket for got it yeah no i i, I like i love this racket actually okay so let's talk about regna here um you guys know you've been out here to buy Justice Racket, and they've been out of stock once in a while. So I've, I would like to first apologize, but you can only get this racket here, not just in the showroom, but in Japan in general. So let's just be clear about that. You have to come here, visit all these friendly people and our friendly racket developer here to buy this racket. Okay, so what makes me love this racket so much? Well, I want you to tell me what makes you like this racket. I'm going to tell you what I feel with this racket. And you're going to tell me all the secrets that's behind this racket. So the one thing that is magic about the Regna 98 specifically is when you strike it right, everything just flows. Whether I swing hard or soft, though, as long as I hit the sweet spot, it dwells very well it stiffens up right when you expect it to and then the ball releases um, we we have actually examined this racket um, a lot in terms of weight and even stiffness and and uh, the flex the balance 
we found that the secret kind of lies right here in this one specific part of this throat where it kind of firms up. That's just our amateur theory. Uh, what is the professional theory? <laughs> well, um, we can't give out too much information, but what I can say is that we've um, packed this with a lot of different materials um, that we've, um, we have gathered from other rackets. And so like you were saying, when you swing fast, no matter if you swing fast or you swing slow, you can still feel the ball and strike the ball well. That's exactly what we were trying to achieve. So um, with a ground stroke, you swing fast and the rackets um, does the ball pocketing. But with volleys or slices, the um, the swing isn't too fast, but the racket stiffens. So the ball still um, flies the way you want it, you want it to. Got it. Now, were you part of the development team of this racket? <laughs> well, as you can tell, I was definitely not part of um, <laughs> developing this racket. But um, it is it is the one that people put most effort to and has the most technology for sure. And right. it's the one, the hardest one to study for me still. Oh, got it. <laughs> it's very complicated. There was a, a video that was made... Um, by Yonix mm -hmm. about this racket, about how much care, development, technology. I mean, literally, they're made by hand, mm -hmm. like a Bentley. So, hence, like, royalty, right? <laughs> exactly. That, that's what we were trying to go for. And actually, I want to point out that this design is also um, very thought through. We have a bit of the glossy finish and also a soft touch. And then this part, um, on the side, can you see the patterns? Mm -hmm. This is all hand painted by our um, skilled oh. craftsmen. Okay. Great. So, guys, this is the Regna again, only in Japan. The top end rackets of Yonex are only made in Japan. They are the only racket manufacturer that owns and runs their own racket factory now where is that factory that factory is in niigata japan and niigata specifically is known for its craftsmanship um, in japan so we make sure that all our rackets are made to the highest quality possible so that everyone that buys our racket can enjoy the the performance that we've um, we've developed um for the racket how far is that from here? I would say you have to take the bullet train maybe two hours. How much time do you have today? Um, not, not long enough no. to go to Niigata. <laughs> Come on, let's go to lunch. No, let's go. Come on, let's go to lunch. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for spending the time with me and explaining the uh, Yonex racket line. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and enjoy your visit in Japan. Oh, thank you so much. All right, we got Eric here. Um, let's call him the everything, <laughs> the string specialist, the stringer, the, uh, the man behind the scene of everything that strings and stringing here. So Eric, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. Thanks. All right, so let's talk about um, some of my favorite strings here. Um, well, since we have Rev on top, talk to me about who and what you guys were envisioning when you developed the Polytor Rev. Uh, with the Polytor Rev, uh, the main goal of it was to increase the amount of spin, uh, get more bite on the string, uh, have an overall improved feel. With with it, pentagonal string, the Polytor Spin, is that there's silicone infused oil uh, inside the filaments themselves to increase the amount of um, the how the tension lasts, how long it lasts as well. So the durability has increased as well compared to the other um, uh, multi-sided multi strings we've, ha we've had in the past. So the overall feel and increased spin is uh, pretty much the goal of the 
creation of the string. Got it. So the I believe the top selling string in America is the Polytor Pro. Now, who was that developed for? For a lot of those people who want the softer feel while still getting the ball pocketing in into it, as composed as compared to, for example, the Polytor Strike, which focuses on um, the absolute repulsion of the of the of the uh, ball. So having a little bit more ball pocketing gets you a nice control. Is uh, great in hybrid strings as well. Some of our players like Root are uh, using it quite uh, well. I think on the tour, Root's using Pro. He is using Polytor Pro. Yes. Oh. Yeah, no, I saw a lot of people using Pro when I was, you know, stringing for the college guys and at the Challenger Tour level. Um, Strike is a newer string for you guys. Um, I deem it as probably the firmest string in your line. Is that true? That is very true, yes. It's the firmest string that we have, most, especially because it's for the string, is you usually have the perception that it's going to be a little bit more faster on the uh, rebound. So mm-hmm. it's, it's a quite repulsive, quite quick on the uh, on the attack so it's a speed poly string you could you could say yeah granted you hit it hard enough and fast enough to have it repulse off <laughs> very true very true but then that's why we have a lot of our power hitters are using are using this string for example um no- osaka nomi is using this string oh. quite often yes now the string that surprised me the most is the the Rab- rabakana string which is the polytor fire when i first hit with it I was like, this is very, very muted. Um, and then as I hit with it more and more, I got more used to it. And I got kind of used to the the dampening aspects and the, the feel of it. Describe to me what's in that fire. Well, so fire is uh, previously before the Rev used the silicon infused uh, filament. The what fire was exclusively using this uh, silicon infused filament to sort of... Um, well, again, increase durability, increase tension, increase the snapback of the string. So you're getting a, a lot of that, you sort of said, muted feel. Mm-hmm. But again, the tension also was a lot uh, more, it stayed a lot longer. You lost mm-hmm. less tension, I'm assuming. And then I'm, I'm assuming you, get, you got a pretty good feel out of, out of it uh, in the end. Right. The longer it goes, uh, it has better feel durability, right. so to speak, compared to, let's say, the Polyser Pro. Yeah, that's true. The more, I liked it the more I went along. Now, um, spin and air, what are those for? Air is a softer poly, having a, a, the durability of po- a poly, while having a softer, even a softer feel than the polys are pro, for example. Polys are spin is our fi- a pentagonal string. Uh, lot, some players are still using it on the tour. Uh, Yoshi Doni Shoka, for example. Ga- wider gaps between the s- sides of the string gets you a little bit more uh, bite, uh, if you, especially if you use it as a hybrid string. All right, so... Let's look at the Rexus string. In the beginning, there was only one Rexus string, and that was the Comfort. Uh, the speed was added about a little over a year ago, and so was the feel. Um, why are there three now? Actually, um, before the Comfort, so to speak, there was actually one Rexus string called Rexus. Mm. So before, uh, once we decided to try to... Uh, the original Rexus was developed for more improved feel, improved uh, repulsion, uh, durability was a factor too, uh, compared to our previous uh, multi filaments. And then moving forward from that, in order to kind of improve and better the strings, we decided to split it into originally two uh, Rexes, so Rexes Speed and Rexes Comfort, about two years ago. And then last year, we developed a Rexes Feel. So in the difference between these two is you're getting uh, much more repulsion going down this way with the Rexes Speed. Uh, you're getting a little bit more durability and a little bit more ball pocketing and definitely much more ball pocketing feel with uh, Rex's feel. The difference between the coding is quite different between them, but generally the core is the same. So 850 has been one of your like core great selling strings around. What is so special about the 850? Most definitely the long time users of the 850 <laughs> is definitely going to be uh, looking into the um, softer, plusher feel of the string. Um, they quite like the snapback of this but um, generally there's been a slow transition um, towards uh, grabbing towards more towards Rex's feel because um, I think at least in my experience a lot of our customers tend to uh, prefer the 850 just for that um, incredibly plush feel. We're going to be talking about my favorite stringing machines now. This is the Bentley of stringing machines, probably the best you can get. 
This particular machine was used at the last Summer Olympics here in Tokyo by my buddy Eric here. And he's got all these signatures from famous badminton players. Eric also told me he can do a badminton racket in 10, 15 minutes. I think the fastest I ever done was 50 minutes. But let's call Eric over here. Eric, really? 10 minutes, buddy? Badminton. We're talking badminton here. Badminton rackets, yeah, 10 minutes. When the player gets the rackets in, we want to get to them at, in a prompt time. And uh, it do, the line does get long at times. So we want to make sure we have the highest quality, but at the highest speed possible. So if you guys don't know, badminton rackets are usually a lot harder than a tennis racket to string. <laughs> Isn't that right? Um, I think they're both equally hard. Um, definitely, the we want to prevent the racket from warping or having a so, sort of unnatural feel to it. But definitely, I would say there are more strings in a more poles in a badminton racket than there are in a typical tennis racket. And the string is super thin and it's super tight in there. How do you weave that so fast? Mm, practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do one maybe once a year. That's probably why. <laughs> I think you'll get there. We are the official stringer of the Australian Open, and yes. um, hopefully in the future we'll probably we'll be able to get a machine full of their signatures as well. Ooh. Yeah, I want to go. <laughs> All right, so I noticed that this is 50 pounds. Do you guys, um, your clientele, do they ask for pounds or kilos here? Um, interesting thing about that is uh, Japan primarily uses uh, pounds, much like the, uh, much like the Americas and Canada. Um Although there are specific customers that come in and, and request kilos, so we do ad adhere to whatever the customer requests to the to the dot. So, tell me about the uh, the features and the benefits of this machine. Along with being armed with the latest in tension head uh, technology, we also have a fully automated um, hydraulic system on top of it having an auto lock function. That will lock. That will lock the turnstile as we pull. Oh, okay. Uh, what is this right here? On top of that, we have a dedicated USB charging port for people who are stringing on the go. So this is uh, quite useful for those uh, who who need to get their phone or other devices charged while they're working on the players' rackets. Okay, you guys think of everything. Can I play with it? Yeah, of course. It is moving, yeah. <laughs> it's quietly going up and down, not. Now, how did I? How did you trigger this? How so, did you trigger this to go? So the so with our attention heads, especially with the previous ProTech eights and other other devices, we it comes it's able to uh, activate based on three three options. So we, there's a touch panel here and here. And then it also reacts once the string is clamped down. So we pull the string up, it'll start moving already. Oh. So the problem that I have with electronic machines in general is that when you string badminton rackets, the tension just kind of over pulls a little bit. So I worry about the warping of a badminton racket. What functions does this have to prevent that? Um, on top of being armed with uh, one the latest in our technology for the uh, side supports, having a dedicated badminton mode to keep the head a little bit oh. short, a little bit shorter distance creates uh, has has shorter distance for accurate uh, tensions, uh, as in according to uh, well badminton uh, related stream. Got it. All right. Let's let's take a look at the other machine over here since this is. The Rolls Royce of machines. Uh, let's see uh, the Mercedes of machines back here. So Precision 8.0 now. So what's the difference? The difference is besides moving the sh uh, string tray into the into the center, having a more compact frame for people with smaller shops, for example. A lot there are there were some people who didn't ha find the need for an automatic hydraulic mm -hmm. uh, lift system or the auto lock. This is a manual lock system. The, the the string rails, the clamps, the side supports, and the tension head are all same unit as the um, 
the Vision 9. So the only downgrade to this is really just the uh, life, uh, quality of life features that other people didn't find that they needed. Gotcha. So just the luxuries of a stringing machine. You don't need a butt warmer, do you? <laughs> Thank you, Eric, for uh, showing me around the the machines. Now, this is an RDC machine. Um, we got swing weight, obviously. We got weight. We got balance. What else do we have? Top of that has the performance swing weight that uh, developed formula developed by our development team that uh, takes the balance and swing weight in, in, in consideration for when you actually swing the racket. So it'll kind of give you a example of how much weight it will be when you actually swing it as composed as, as compared to this gently flowing to figure out the swing weight on the machine. A lot of the other uh, competitors, for example, might, weren't able to do badminton rackets because of it being, uh, for example, a roller system as, as, as opposed to this uh, for the weight. Mm -hmm. So this actually helps in terms of, let's say, for example, getting accurate read on a badminton racket. Uh, definitely tennis rackets are mo uh, most definitely possible. You will get the oh. left and right side balance gets the total weight on of the racket on top of having the uh, uh, the head balance uh, uh, lift, lift, uh, lifted on the um, coming from the uh, grip at grip up so when you say left and right side balance are you telling me that one side could be heavier than the other it could be very possible there are some people who do mess with their racket weights in that sense uh, based on based on the if they, if they want to increase their slice and whatnot so there there are also some rackets that may or may not be accurately placed. This is just for us to kind of get the most accurate measurement out of the bracket that we're trying to uh, measure at the, prom at, the at the time. Got it. So let's swing this puppy. <laughs> Whoa. 87.5. 90. So the swing weight is obviously the swing weight uh, given when it's flown left and right on this machine, but the, the performance swing weight is calculated uh, uh, calculated between the uh, total, the swing weight and the and the balance to kind of get a more kind of an accurate more accurate reputation of what the record will feel like when you're actually swinging it in play. In play, I've never heard that before. Um, how important is that? I think it's a decent reference. It's as for all numbers, they're all they're all food for thought. Uh, whatever is best suits you is best, whether it's badminton or tennis. I think. Okay. Great. Thank you, Eric. So they can come into the showroom, have you give them their numbers of their new racket, and then they can go home and mess with it. Do you guys customize here too? We do. For example. If the customer request at the customer's request, we can add lead tape to uh, lead tape for them, but we don't do any uh, official adjustments to the ra to the racket itself. Um, a lot of people come in using the, well, look wanting to see if they, for example, other brands they want to check they would want to check the racket and then maybe get something similar to the specs they have at the moment. And I think this is a really useful tool to help decipher what a customer's needs are. If you know your specs and you want to get a Yonex racket to match your old racket specs. I think this is probably the easiest way to do it, right? I think so too. <laughs> Guys, the only place I've ever seen a display like this, um, Eric's gonna assist me. We have an egg here. And uh, there's a date on this egg, Eric. Is it fresh? That's very fresh. Oh, yes. It's, that means is it going to break? I don't believe so. Is it going to break if I drop it on the ground? It'll break if I drop it on the ground. Okay. But what do we have here behind me? We have um, something that's uh, the highlight of our shoes, uh, something that's in the shoes that you're wearing right now. So it's our Power Cushion Plus. It's got uh, great sock absorption on top of great repulsion. Okay. So show me how it's done. Are you sure you don't want to do the honors? Oh, oh sure. I might drop it here. <laughs> <laughs> so just like seriously drop it. Seriously drop it there, yeah. Seriously. Yeah, seriously. Okay. Seriously, All right, here we go, guys.
That is not an egg. Should we crack it open? <laughs> you want to crack it open? Uh, they call it Tamago here. And uh, who wants scrambled eggs? Oh, man. Can't we just eat it on top of rice? Oh, you can eat raw eggs here. You can't eat it raw back home. Here's your fresh eggs. Just got to get oh. some rice for you. That's real. This is uh, how we protect your knees. Okay. So, cushioning that won't crack an egg. So, tell me how that's done in my shoe. Uh, there are multiple stages of power cushion. We have a very a thicker sli slice of power cushion inside that you pro that you probably can't see in my running shoe. But uh, on top of that, there's a type of power cushion that's also in the sole. And then the uh, insole is also uh, uh, another type of power cushion. So we got multiple layers of power cushion to help improve the uh, shock absorption uh, when you're doing your steps, you're running, and on your when you're on court. On top of that, it's helping to repulse you propulse you to get you to where you need to for your shot or just get you forward this is in every tennis shoe this is in all of our shoes all of our shoes okay let's go take a look at the line so we're at the eclipse generation five um, talk to me about the highlights of this new shoe so the main thing is I think you've uh, kind of feel is that we've we've uh, made this shoe to be a very stable shoe very uh, to help you get uh, around the court the beyond the fit of this we've also in this latest generation that just came out recently here in Japan um, we've added an ex a sidewall a power cushion here to help you get push off the sides when you're when you're going when you go inside to side. So this, I think this will be a good, uh, good point for those people who want to improve the speed of their footwork, who want to get a more, who feel a little bit uneasy about their footwork as well. I think this will be a good shoe for those. So a very stable shoe. Very stable shoe. Yeah. How about those people who like to go sideways and wear out shoes? Is this your most durable? I would say this is one of our more durable shoes. It's got a, like, along with that side wall, the, the sole is actually quite durable, um, as are all our soles, but I believe this one is a little bit more hard, hard as, especially with people who want, who, who tend to have, slide on the mm -hmm. side of their foot. All right. And you got clay version too? We got clay versions down here. We got multiple colors. Got the whole shebang. Got it. Look, looks like military green right there. <laughs> <laughs> Next line is Sonic Cage. What series are we in now? We're looking at the our all-rounder shoe. This one's got a wider line of colors, great for anyone from beginner to advanced. It's got uh, it's also one of those sh uh, shoes shoe lines with uh, wide uh, types. Ooh. Yeah, I've always known Sonic Cage to be very, um, I don't want to say wide, but definitely supports that wider foot a little bit better, and the people with the wider feet are able to. Um, kind of just sink your foot in there and not worry too much about losing a nail or busting a toe. I will definitely say this got a little bit more cushioning in here, so it's it probably feels a lot more comfortable with the softer app. But we definitely have also a wider type uh, here uh, for in this in this color, for example, or for example, the other ones would be regular regular fit. If you have a wider feet, we definitely recommend trying look, uh, look, looking up the wider types that we have available. Got it. Perfect. Looks like we had an update here. I don't remember looking at these in the uh, the Fusion Revs. So what changed in the new Fusion Rev? Well, having this new Fusion Rev, uh, the update of the shoe came out last year. We got recent recently gained, gotten some new colors along with the uh, the new Eclipsion. Um, having these wave wave designs actually helps increase the amount of durability on top of uh, decreasing the uh, lightness. Uh, uh, increasing the lightness of the, sh of, the of the shoe, trying to uh, make it a, more, a little bit more pliable upper, reduce the weight, on top of having a better, nice, more overall fit, especially around the uh, instep area. Love that sole. So, what is your fastest shoe? What is which one of these shoes are built for speed? 
I would definitely probably say um, this one's a bit more for the fi uh, for a good fit. You'll still get good uh, footwork out of it, but I would definitely say you probably get a lot more speed out of the Eclipsion with the slightly harder, it's uh, slightly harder, uh, stiffer sole compared to the Fusion Rev. So you get speed and durability with the Eclipsion. Definitely, definitely. foot scanning machine. It helps get it gets a three D image around around you to get uh, around your feet to get a more accurate uh, measurement for. You know, getting a better fit for your shoes as well. So it'll tell me how how jacked up my foot is, how square my foot is, how wide my foot is, how much of a chicken foot I have. It'll tell, it'll give you all that and make sure that make sure that you know you have unique feet. So I, I know I have jacked up feet. We'll just now confirm it. Uh, usually the machine won't tell us, but we will try to give you a little bit more advice when you come when comes to picking out shoes. Uh, I think your shoe, your feet look fine to me from here, but why don't we check it out? Okay. Yeah, I have flat feet, guys. Okay. So what do I do? I'm just gonna ask you to step onto the platform. Yes. Right here. Usually we ask you to name and email to get the results sent in, but since that'll take a little bit of time, we'll get that to you later. And then. I have those two little children right there. I think not. You're a little <laughs> bit bigger than them. Just hold still real quick, and it'll get you the scan right away. A matter of seconds, we got your data right here. So based on this, based, this is the the recommendation based off based on what the application says. But look going down, and. Looking at it, you actually only have a flat left foot. Your right foot is actually not bad. You have a little bit lower instep, I think probably because of the dropped arch. But um, you have wide heels. That's uh, an interesting point. But um, I think the major things we look at would be uh, everything, all the data going here. So between your foot, the length, uh, length of your foot, the width, the width, the length of your foot, the width of your foot. It also gives you the heel heel widths here, and as well as I mentioned earlier, the instep bound. All right, so let's talk about Yonex style now. Check out this cool display with splashes of color. Um, let's start with the bags. Eric, you guys have always been known for making very high quality great well thought out bags tell me about what you guys think about when you think of that tennis player we like to think about the utility of the bag on top of the rugged durability uh you're going to need to go when you're on tour or if you're just a layman go trying to get through the train get to your next, des next destination which is practice a lot of times uh, these bags uh, have to go through a lot of wear and tear through the elements in the rain sun or or otherwise so other manufacturers usually, you know, the bags maybe last a year. How long are these supposed to last you? I will have to get back to you on that, but <laughs> I've definitely had mine bag for quite a lot longer than a year with da almost daily use. Right. So that's what I'm talking about, Yonex quality. Um, the one thing that I noticed that you guys do very well are the zippers. The zippers are always well made. The straps are well thought out. And everything is usually, like you said, rugged and durable. For example, a lot of oh. the uh, nicer b functions of the bag include also the, uh, for example, the quick release straps here. But um, our um, zippers are uh, usually made in, in conjunction with uh, YKK, a uh, very famous uh, fastener yes. brand. So these are tend to be they tend to be very durable. Tend to have a lot more. Uh, well, in terms of it, not in terms, not not only durability, but there's a little bit more stability and how long it how and how long it lasts. It doesn't really just fly open uh, over time. I, no, I love that bag. That's a new Percept 15. It is definitely uh, made with the intention of representing the colors of uh, the Percept. I think it looks quite nice myself, actually. That's definitely a Turing Pro's bag right there. I would say so. What's going on over here with this the tournament line? In this 
particular line it does have our very cool technology uh, built into built into them but the main factor behind the design is we want to go we want to kind of um, draw out draw out our inspiration from nature and mother nature and uh, be a little bit more uh, conscientious about our uh, uh, the sustainability in the world and whatnot so your tournament um sponsored level players are wearing this on tour uh yes they are they recently looked the apparel earlier with bags and definitely the apparel here will be used on the uh in in the quite near future for the uh, tours maybe you'll see uh like maybe hubert would be wearing this on in the near future in the next uh grand slam tournament perhaps so let's talk about yonex head to toe now what does that mean it means a yonex sponsored player that is suited up and dressed from head to toe just like Rabakana up there and Casper up there now something like this um Eric I can see Rabakana wearing that did she wear that uh definitely this is more uh, this is geared towards the uh Australian Open she did wear I think the blue tank on top of the um She's she's got she's got the sun visor. She's got down the the, the skirt or the dress, and she's also got down the shoes as well. Top of the bag, um, the whole the whole the whole set. Do you guys have a whole design team that makes these? Oh yeah, we have a design team that labors labors daily, trying to get the best designs, trying to get a more conscientious uh, look for both the players and our uh, lovely customers. So let's look at the. The men's side of it here, um, I can see Casper wearing this. I can definitely see Casper wearing <laughs> that too. But I think I saw uh, uh, Fukash wearing that the other day. Yes, you're right. <laughs> That's actually a cool thing. Now, what is the the material that you you were saying that it's breathable? Uh, our breathable material would be the very cool series. We have uh, multiple steps in there, including very cool dry, which keeps you both. Um, cooler by a minimal three uh, uh three degrees centigrade to and more uh compared to perhaps other other apparel it's got a lot more breathability and the very cool dry also helps increase the amount of uh time it, uh decrease the amount of time it takes for the for the sweat to wick away so i always like to test this in in uh, shorts i like to stick my hands in the shorts because i want to make sure it fits a couple balls Yes, it does. I would say it fits a couple of balls and more. <laughs> and then let's look, let's look up front here at the the highlighted pair here. They could be a mixed doubles team. Um, what line is this? This is our World's Collection series for our uh, tournament. I think you saw a lot. A lot of people might might have seen the seen this on on court at the Australian Open. Mm -hmm. um, definitely for. Uh, a lot of customers, I think the appeal appeal of this is the a nice color, colorway. Got no, I like the the blues. Definitely, I like I like the blues too. Really re reminiscent of nature and the uh, sea and water. I think. Definitely. So there's one special thing that you guys do here um, at the uh, showroom, the Yannick showroom. Um, talk to me about custom embroidery. Uh, with the at the Yonex Tokyo Showroom, we are able to custom embroider anything from your maybe a racket case or towels, and definitely the apparel you see we we just went through. Uh, you can get your uh, name or perhaps maybe initials uh, embroidered anywhere you'd like, uh, almost anywhere you'd like on a shirt, and uh, within a reasonable amount of time, we'll try we'll try to get it done, to, uh, get it back to you as as soon as possible. There's multiple colors and multiple fonts you could go for. So when you say as soon as possible, what's the length of time normally? Uh, anywhere from fifteen minutes to thirty minutes, depending on if it's a uh, maybe a, a small, a simple towel to maybe a piece of apparel. It could could be a shirt, could be a jacket, or sometimes you embroider hats. Try to get it on the brim. Wow! So do it while you wait, pretty much then. Uh, one one time givens, but uh, sometimes the service is so popular that we have a long line of products just sitting there to be waiting to be embroidered. We have uh, staff working hard, hard, hard at it, when, and we try to get it to the customers as fast as we can. Wow. Okay. So Yonex service at the Yonex showroom.
All right, so I would like to thank the team at Yonex for helping arrange this special tour of their showroom. Um, I had a wonderful time here. If you are ever in Japan or the Tokyo area, it is a super short trip to the showroom. Uh, literally from Tokyo Station, it's two stops away. Get off at Shimbashi, and it's right outside the station. Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.